Good morning, ladies. Well, we got some chairs in here today. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for coming. We do have an update. Uh, as you know, this is uh, there's a lot of work to go into making these plans and doing the logistics, and we must be flexible. We must be alert, and we are. Uh, of course, the hurricane is is gathering strength. As you know, it's expected to be a Category Four which means over 130 miles an hour. So John Quarello from the National Weather Service. You begin, please. Thank you, Governor. So as of earlier this morning, the National Hurricane Center issued a hurricane watch and a storm surge watch from uh, along the South Carolina coast from Edisto Beach northward. This hurricane watch means that hurricane force winds and life-threatening storm surge are all possible in that watch area. Uh, Florence is currently a Category 4 hurricane uh, with wind speeds of 130 miles per hour. The official forecast track has changed little, uh, still showing the potential for a major hurricane to make landfall somewhere along the Carolina coast Thursday night into early Friday. It's still very important that we've been mentioning uh, to remember not to focus on the projected landfall location of Florence. While the official track shows landfall along the southern North Carolina coast, the cone of uncertainty still covers most of the South Carolina coastline, indicating potential landfall along the South Carolina coast is still possible. There's some concern that residents in evacuation zones will see the track and think the storm will not pose a threat, but it's important to remember that the impacts of this hurricane will extend far beyond where it makes landfall. Hurricane force winds, storm surge inundation, again are all possible in the watch area. In addition, as Florence nears the coast, it will slow its forward speed, like producing significant rainfall and flooding north and east of its track. So overall, it's better to get prepared now and get to a safe location if you're in an evacuation zone than risk being directly impacted by a landfalling major hurricane if Florence does indeed come to the South Carolina coast and, and make direct landfall here. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, John. And we'll answer questions in a minute. Uh, effective immediately, I have lifted the mandatory evacuation order for all evacuation zones in the following three counties in the following three counties only they will go into effect at noon they will not go into effect i have now lifted them in three counties and three counties only jasper buford and colleton and that is based on the most recent information that mr quarello just uh, related edisto beach however is in colleton county Edisto Beach is also within the hurricane watch zone, so Edisto Beach will still be considered at evacuation at 12 noon today under the evacuation order. The latest hurricane watch issued by the National Hurricane Center, as you know, extends along the coast from Edisto Beach all the way up to the North Carolina border and beyond. So that's what we're watching. 
What is a hurricane watch? As explained, that means that hurricane conditions, and those are sustained winds of 74 miles an hour or more, are possible within that area. A hurricane watch is typically issued 48 hours in advance of the anticipated onset of the hurricane in that area. How about <clears throat> our offices, state offices, and schools? State government offices and schools in Jasper, Beaufort, and Colleton counties, as I mentioned, as well as in Aiken, Allendale, Bamberg, and Barnwell counties, will and Hampton County will reopen and operate tomorrow, Wednesday, September the 12th, according to the local authorities' direction. We are lifting that order as to them and them only. Also, I have ordered that the lane reversal scheduled to begin at noon today on I-26 in Charleston will start one hour earlier at 11 o'clock. It has already started to relieve traffic in that area. The Department of Transportation and Department of Public Safety were able to prepare and secure the lanes for reversal earlier than anticipated and there's no reason for us not to go ahead and open them up so they open now and traffic is flowing. Highway U.S. Highway 501 in Myrtle Beach is still only 12 noon today scheduled order for its reversal. Because the planned evacuation has been lifted for Beaufort County, as mentioned earlier, there's no need to reverse those lanes there. That's on Highway U.S. Highway 278 and Highway 21 in Beaufort County. There will be no reversal of those lanes there. Department of Transportation and Department of Public Safety will keep a presence, a strong presence, on those highways and will monitor the traffic there to ensure a steady and safe and normal traffic flow. So let me be, let me be clear, the mandatory evacuation is still in place for all the evacuation zones in Charleston County, Berkeley County, Dorchester, Georgetown, and Horry counties. This is still a very dangerous storm we must take it very seriously. It, the weather man here and others uh, are all predicting that this is a unpredictable storm, a hurricane, and so we must be vigilant. We are in a, a very deadly and important game of chess with Hurricane Florence. And what we're doing, Team South Carolina doing, is doing is staying one step ahead. And that's what we have done with the, the precision of these orders and instructions that we're giving now. Next, I'll call on General Livingston for his report. Thank you, Governor. General? Uh, Team South Carolina, all of uh, the uh, departments continue to reposition resources. Uh, uh, the um, uh, Director Smith and uh, Secretary Hall will talk specifically about the lane reversal piece but we are positioning all resources according to the governor's orders, and uh, we're prepared to react to the hurricane uh, in the other counties that uh, are under the evacuation order. Uh, we're taking this extremely seriously. Uh, this is something we have not seen since Hugo. Uh, even if the hurricane goes uh, slightly north, the we'll see effects like we saw in Charleston and Hugo. So this is a very serious storm and uh, Team South Carolina continues to reposition. Uh, we have about uh, 1,800 National Guardsmen on duty right now, and uh, we will continue to increase the mobilization as the storm gets closer. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, General. Secretary Hall. Thank you, Governor. As you know, we are currently looking at our traffic volumes within the Myrtle Beach area, as well as the Charleston area, and I'm here to report as we've reported earlier today that we are seeing significant traffic increases on the highways coming out of the Myrtle Beach area, uh, in particular along Highway 501, SC9, Conway Bypass, and US 378. We're seeing anywhere from four to six times normal traffic volumes on those highways, and so the lane reversal on 501 will be just in time to help alleviate that. For the Charleston area, we're seeing approximately three times normal traffic volumes on I-26, heading in the westbound direction, and so that lane reversal as well will be just in time to help address some of those traffic flows. Thank Governor. Thank you, Governor. Leroy Smith, Department of Public Safety. Uh, as the Governor stated, uh, the lane reversal operations on the I-26 corridor uh, are underway. 
uh, I must uh, state that the, uh, the flushing process uh, went very uh, smoothly uh, this morning. Uh, with regard to US 501, uh, the flushing process uh, has started. Uh, that uh, uh, started at 11 a.m. this morning and we uh, anticipate having that lane reversal uh, on the uh, US 501 uh, implemented at 12 noon. Uh, now, I just want to talk a little about that uh, operation. The ingress will be at uh, US 501 at the SC22 uh, interchange, and the egress uh, where it ends will be at the uh, US 501 uh, Marion bypass. It's about a 30 mile uh, route, and again, uh, the flushing process uh, has begun for that. Uh, our evacuation plan is uh, in full effect. Uh, that means that all of our resources dedicated to, to uh, this endeavor are, are in position, whether it's a local uh, uh, evacuation routes, the traffic control points, et cetera. As the governor alluded to earlier, we will be in a position to monitor and manage the, uh, the traffic on the uh, uh, US 21 and US 278 uh, uh, highways. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Kim Stimson. Thank you, Governor. Uh, the uh, state emergency response team, our priorities obviously are still the evacuation and sheltering operation. You've heard about the evacuation piece, and so we'll talk a little bit about the sheltering piece. Um, well, shelters are starting to be opened right now. Uh, we've got about uh, 28 shelters that, uh, that will be opened here shortly, or if not already, and have a capacity of about 25,000 people. Uh, and then we can open additional shelters as needed uh, you know, throughout the next couple of days. Uh, the full list of the shelters uh, will be updated live in real time on our website, <coughs> scemd.org, and it's also in our South Carolina Emergency Manager mobile app. Reminder that if you are going to a shelter, and a lot of people will like not to, they uh, go with family and friends or find a hotel room somewhere, but if you go to a shelter, you're, you will need blankets and pillows and comfort items, uh, any medicines that you might have for any uh, uh, chronic conditions, Obviously, you know, things like ID documents and that sort of thing. And then special food, uh, <coughs> if you have small children and on a restricted diet, there'll be food available, but it may not be, uh, you know, what you necessarily need all the time. And pets, service animals are allowed at the, uh, at the shelters. Uh, and there are some shelters that do accept pets, but there are many that don't. don't. But workers will be there if you show up and, and help you make arrangements uh, for your pet. And also, last item I wanted to mention is our public information phone line, uh, uh, public information phone service is open right now and it's at 1-866-246-0133. Uh, they have Spanish interpreters available uh, if, if there's a need for that, but it's available right now and operational for evacuation questions, shelter questions, or any other questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Sorry, what was that number yes, again? Is, there it is. So the lane reversals, um, how is that, how are those impacting folks trying to get gasoline and other supplies to the coast? The Department of Transportation in cooperation with DPS, we're developing some routing plans specifically for those uh, tankers and special needs that need to get to the coast. So we're working them around the areas that they need to go. Next question. When are you expecting the peak hour of all these motors moving towards the Midlands and then kind of what's your um, precaution to... You know, million or so people. Right. And what's your precaution to National Guardsmen and other people that's working along the highway? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer to uh, Secretary Hall as, in terms of the, uh, the volume of traffic and so forth. So we're seeing roughly currently about three times the normal volume that we expect to see on I-26. Obviously with the storm approaching, the evacuation order going into effect we're expecting to see some additional increases in that I don't have a specific time exactly when we expect to see those peak numbers but we are monitoring those every hour and uh, trying to make adjustments as needed with patrol to make sure we have things moving smoothly up and down the highways to get people out of the area of danger so sometime you know late today early or tomorrow as well Warning time seems to be a, a common time for people to want to get on the highway, so we're prepared. Whenever the peak comes, we'll, we'll be ready to handle it. Thank you, General. Governor. Uh, ju just a reminder, we will terminate operations six hours before the onset of tropical force winds to give everybody 
all the workers a chance to uh, remove the barriers and uh, get into a safe location. Governor, yesterday you mentioned that some of the school buses would be used to ferry people from those evacuation areas. Right. Has that started yet? If so, how can people find out this is going on? Where can they go? They can call, they call that number to get that information and the, the others as well. But of course, we're not having, we're canceling that order in, in those counties that I mentioned earlier. Just a part of our approach to this, part of our team approach to this is, is to to prepare for the bet for the worst but for, hope for the best and as it, as the weather is shifted we are making the uh, precision adjustments to see that we are we're doing doing the right thing right, but but for, anybody for those other comment or uh, more on that question you know the specific on the local yes okay it's, it's a local yeah. decision the buses go ahead yeah Many, uh, all the local uh, counties the coastal counties have plans to transport people without transportation assets themselves to centralize pickup points and then take them to, to self shelter so the first place to probably call is the is the county and many of them have information lines or call county emergency management but if that doesn't work you can't certainly this number right here will help as well governor following yeah, up on your preparation uh, comment there are those that are, they're saying that you pulled the trigger too early criticizing you especially now that some of the order has been lifted um, what would you say to that well, the order that did not go into effect was lifted would as I say, we this is a very dangerous hurricane, and we do not want to gamble with a single life of a single South Carolinian. Uh, we live in we live on the coast, so we're going to have hurricanes, and we must take precautions. And everyone agrees this is most one of the most dangerous and one, uh, most unpredictable we've seen, with uh, a force uh, that is even greater than Hugo, which a lot of us remember as being being very strong. So we, we try to operate on the very best and latest information with precision just to not to inconvenience people when, uh, when, it's, when it's not necessary to do so, but also to be sure that our people are out of harm's way and that we've exercised all the uh, logistical implications and everything we need uh, to do to have uh, thousands of public servants that are working to keep the people safe. This is a part of the plan, and you may notice it uh, when we announce the the original precautions we did we on the lane reversals in in Beaufort County we had those in in suspense that is they were not ordered to go into effect at noon today as the others were and that's precisely because the situation in those counties towards the southern part of the state are a little different from the others and we have now implemented further and refined that plan as you see today I want to go back to my bus question so as it stands right now there are no buses that you guys know of taking people to these shelters? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You do that? I'm, I'm sure that's ongoing right now, and that's part of the process. Uh, so I, I just can't tell you for sure, you know, who's moving or what, but that's all part of the process. And right now, the actually the evacuation doesn't start for another 30 minutes, so I'm, they probably don't have a lot of business yet, but they probably will later today. Also, someone just asked me, is there a reason that there's not a sign language interpreter out here right now? One was not available. Yeah, exactly, and that uh, we'll have one here available uh, 24 hours a day from now on. On the order itself, you have mentioned that it's mandatory. Yes. What does that word mean exactly? That means you must. You you, you must go. But you, what happens if you don't? Well, to begin with, you you might get you might be a victim of the hurricane. Is one thing that might happen if you don't, because this is this this evacuation order is based on the very best information we have from professional sources all over the world. And in the, the talent in South Carolina and sophistication working on it is second to none anyway. This is our best estimate of the, the right thing to do. But no one will be put in handcuffs and let well, away. Well, te technically they, they have been instances when people have simply refused to leave and where they say, in the, for example, that they're their house so it was not going to be flooded and it turned out the water was up over the roof they were invited to get into a boat and to leave even though they did not want to go are you Te technically it is a mandatory offer. are you requiring people to sign any paperwork if they refuse to leave and that type of thing or no sir Governor, uh, there seemed to be some concern about hotels yesterday. Do we have any idea on the latest figures? Do people need to keep going west past? We do. Wayne Parish is here, Park Recreation and Tourism Director. Wayne. Thank you, Governor. 
Yes, the best way for those that are in the evacuation zones to check for availability outside the evacuation is to look at online travel agents such as Expedia, Travelocity.com. If there's a particular area they'd like to go, they can certainly look at that. You can also use hotel brand websites, uh, other short-term stay sites such as Airbnb to check for areas outside of the evacuation zones. That's the fastest way to check. Can, can they up the price? because of this happening? There are no, there are price gouging laws in South Carolina. I'm not to say they can't, but it'd be, against the, it'd be against the law. And Once the evacuation order, which is now in effect um, as of noon today, will take place, um, price gouging laws are in, are in place now for that to, to prevent that from happening. What if that does happen? What do they do? Um, we'll follow up afterwards. We'll, we'll track that. People can call and report that to this number that you see on the screen here. Call and report a hotel that may be, or a gas station or others that may be gouging and report that and we'll follow up after the storm. And eventually, of course, that would, as Wayne Parrish says, eventually that would, get to, that would get to the Attorney General's office before questions of investigation and prosecution. It's very difficult to do anything on the spot, so people should not expect anything on the spot. Just as people should not expect to get arrested and made to leave, that's, I mean, we have millions of people that could be being evacuated, so we want everybody to use their best judgment, obey the law and obey the destruction. There are concerns from people that are hourly wage workers working in tourist kind of jobs along the coast. Um, what would you tell them in terms of, of perhaps uh, losing a week's wages? Well, we live on the coast, and that means that we have hurricanes. If we lived in other places, we'd have, have other things uh, happen that are part of nature. And uh, I think most of us are just happy to live in South Carolina because we think it's the best place to be. Any more questions for anyone? Do you yes. Can I make a comment? Sure. Uh, I wanted to go back to the uh, timeliness of the evacuation. It takes 36 to 48 hours to evacuate the coast. A storm can make a change in two to three hours uh, that is unpredictable. So as the governor says, we have to err on the side of caution to make sure that all of our citizens are safe. And one life is not worth uh, an economic advantage somewhere else. So inconvenience is part of a hurricane response, uh, but so is caution. Uh, as far as the uh, county and the buses and things are concerned, uh, the state sets the conditions for the counties to be able to evacuate people from the coast, uh, but they'll make those decisions as their individual uh, situations progress. And they'll make the announcements, like Charleston is, is at the uh, uh, Charleston, North Charleston Arena, but they will open that as they have the need to evacuate people. So please go to the locals for that, and the locals will keep uh, us informed up here. One, I was a little confused on the lane reversal. So lane reversals on 26 happened at 11 and for yes. 5.01 at noon. Yes. Okay. And how long will that continue? Until further notice. Yes, until further notice. Uh, but worst case scenario, we must have uh, our officers removed from the routes. We have to retrieve our equipment before the onset of tropical so storm winds. Okay. You, you mentioned some schools would be opening. Do you have plans to close any more schools moving no, forward? No, that all is in effect, except for those that I mentioned earlier, those are certain counties that would be uh, open. So at this time, no more schools should be closing down? Right, other than those we mentioned yesterday. All right. Is there the possibility that we could see um, evacuations lifted later on in other areas? Everything is possible, just like the General Livingston just said. This storm, they say, they're telling us is very unpredictable. Uh, one of the aspects of that is once it gets here, it might, it might stay for a while. It might not leave, which means we're going to have some flooding. We know that for sure. We don't know how high the winds are. We don't know how how the surge, the surge is, that is, it was predicted earlier, it'd be 10 feet above ground level on many parts of the coast. All those things are still changing, uh, probably on a minute by minute basis, but we know we're gonna have flooding, and if, if we have changes uh, that need, need to be acted on, we'll do it immediately, and we will announce those right here. And then lastly, I saw that um, uh, President Trump uh, uh, approved your uh, emergency order. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about what assistance help maybe that's uh, giving the state? That, that uh, emergency declaration from the president opens the door to uh, federal help, assistance, uh, funds, 
uh, in a, a variety of ways, uh, and he called yesterday to say he was doing that, and we are very appreciative of the quick response of the administration. Would anyone want to add about the assistance? Right now, the state of South Carolina has been approved for what they call direct federal assistance, uh, and then that would allow us to, through FEMA, procure uh, anything from generators to food to tarps and that sort of thing. Uh, but we are not yet approved uh, for our own procurement of, and get that 75% reimbursement that we normally get. So right now it's somewhat limited, but we expect that uh, as time goes on that we'll be eligible for, for more programs and uh, as, as the process continues. What should people in the Midlands and more inland be worried about and preparing for? I mean, stores even in Columbia already have water flying off the shelf. Is that, are those purpose? That, that's, that's good. That shows that the people are responding to the situation. The situation, again, according to everybody, this is a very dangerous storm. It could even be Category 5 by the time it, it gets here. It gets, gets off our coast. People need to be careful. Better be safe than sorry. And it's a good sign when we see preparations being made. Anything to the upstate? They're going to be taking in a lot of people up there where we are as well. I know cars and cars full of families. Is there what? Anything in the upstate. Encourage anything of people in the upstate. They'll be taking in a lot of people. As well. well, they need to be on alert just like uh, just like everyone else because this is a, it's a dangerous storm and if we don't know how far the winds and the rain will go. We, as I say, we know we're going to have flooding. Anything else on that? No. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, we're known for hospitality, so I'm sure Greenville, Spartanburg, and the upstate will open their arms and welcome people. Y'all, thank you very much.